Hey guys, I'm Jim. My name is Matt. And thank you for joining us. Today we decided to do something a little different. We are going to take a look at what Disney has in their pipeline for 2021. So are you excited? Yeah, I don't know what to expect. I've never looked at a list like this before. And uh, I have some expectations and I want to see if they're met. All right. So let's jump into it. So there's 52 of these. So that's a lot for Disney. And, and I was just perusing through and it looks like some of them are technically starting in 2021, like production is starting, but they're not actually okay. releasing in 2021. Okay, excellent. So okay. let's start this list. What do you got for All me? All right, number one, number one on the list is called WandaVision. Have you heard that of That sounds like, no, but I've heard of Wonka Vision, which is probably very different than WandaVision. That's right. Definitely is. So WandaVision, they say, is a uh, show that's coming out on Disney+. Plus. It's a series. And it's going to star um, Scarlet Witch and uh, the Vision from the Avengers movies. Definitely know. not Wonka Vision. This definitely, is not Wonka Vision, Jim. Definitely not Wonka Vision. <laughs> Though I thought, oops, I thought this would, uh, I actually accidentally minimized us. Um, I thought that this would be kind of interesting because they filmed it, the, the image I'm looking at here, they actually film it in black and white for part of it. So who knows what we're going to expect. I don't know much about either superhero, to be honest. I know that they're, vo they're both very powerful in their own yeah, way. For sure. I, I know more about Scarlet Witch than I do Vision. Uh Okay. All right. Well, that's cool. coming up in January, so that'll probably be the first one we see anyway. Wait a minute. It's releasing in January or being shot in January? It's releasing in January. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know how this wasn't on our radar before, but I guess maybe we're just not big into Wanda and Vision. I don't know. No. no All right. I'm not. Number that's two. Okay. The first three here look like superhero. The first four look like superheroes. These are all series. Number two. Is Falcon and the Winter Soldier that's going to release in March. That's with that guy who's got the Falcon suit in the Avengers movie. Secondary okay. character. Could be cool. Uh, then we have Loki, which is in May. And I was actually very hyped for this because I love that actor, uh, Tom Hiddleston. Oh, they're casting the same guy? Same guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think he's a pretty good actor. Okay. I'm I'm very disconnected from the the big franchise comic book movies. Oh, well, there's so going to be plenty I, of other opportunities it, here. Yeah, I'm sure. And uh, I know who you're talking about. I know what they are. I just haven't seen most of them. Yeah, yeah. This is just the Loki guy from the Avengers yeah. movie. Yeah, okay. Um, keeping in line with that, they have Hawkeye for fall, which is... I guess Hawkeye from the show and says here that the daughter in the movie is going to be like the main character. So I guess Hawkeye's like retiring his bow and arrow, giving it to his daughter and maybe they're going to father a uh, daughter son bonding or something like that. Who knows? Okay. All right. Then we have, I'm going to skip past a few more of these superhero ones because it sounds like we don't watch a lot of superhero ones and I'm also a little disconnected. So let's go to the so let's go to some of the other ones. So we got Star Wars, just in general, the Star Wars category. I don't know how much Star Wars you watch. I've been enjoying The Mandalorian. Okay. That is definitely on this list. So the spin-off of The Mandalorian, which I guess is itself a spin-off of Star Wars? Is that how it works? You know what? I don't know much. I don't know what's happening anymore with that franchise. Wait, is it is it Rogue Squadron or Rogue something? Uh, let's see here. There is a spin-off of the Rogue One movie coming called Star Wars Andor, and it says it, yeah, it's a spin-off with the person's Diego Luna. I don't remember who it is in the movie. So that's spin-off of that. You have a spin-off of The Mandalorian into 
another episode, another series called The Mandalorian Rangers of the New Republic and Ahsoka. Another spinoff. They have, I can see how, how connected we are. This is already, we are already in tune with Disney. This is one I do know though. They're coming out with Obi-Wan Kenobi and they're going to be recasting Hayden Christensen in that series. No, I don't believe you. They are doing it and he is going to be Darth Vader in this. And they're recasting uh, the guy who was Obi-Wan Kenobi. Forget his name. Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. Love that guy. Yeah. Yeah, I like him. See, see, now I could talk about Ewan McGregor and Real Big Fish, because that's that's where I live in this in this universe. But can't talk about much of anything that, that I've heard so far. But I'm excited. You know what? That that has my curiosity though. I can't believe they're casting uh, that guy again as Darth Vader. Oh yeah. You know the the wow. th- the thing is, and I feel bad for the guy. Part of that movie, when you watch it, you just cringe, and you're wondering, is it the actor, or is it the the movie itself? Like, is it the script, or is it like the the, the production of how they decided to shoot it? And ultimately, I think a little has to fall in all the categories at some point, and you can't just be like, well, I was given a, a bad script, I couldn't act. It was like, well, you could always bring to life something, even if the script was bad. So I f- who. I understand what you're saying, and I want to agree with that. And another example of that same thing happening is who is the guy who played Joker that isn't Joaquin Phoenix and isn't Heath Ledger? Who is the other guy? Gerard Leto? Might be Jared, Jared, Le- Jar- Jared Leto. Yes, yes. Okay, so when, yeah, Jared Leto. when they first release just a photo of him, oh, and right. I think like his hands were like this, he was like, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah, and he had yeah. the teeth and the tattoos. Okay, so... Right when I saw that, my immediately my immediate reaction was, "This guy is gonna do. He's gonna have an amazing performance. He's gonna perform very, very well." But the script and the direction they're taking the character in, That's right. I think, I think are going to be very, very poor decisions, and it's it's gonna be hard for him because everything else is just gonna suck. And I think I was right. Yeah, <laughs> you were definitely right. <laughs> I think he put a lot of work and he did a lot of great things with what he was given. Yeah. But, you know, he was on a sinking ship. Yeah. The, just so the thing that the thing that blows me blows my mind about that was that movie built a spinoff, and the spinoff was a Harley Quinn solo movie. And I remember thinking, I didn't really think her performance was any better than the other performances in that movie. I thought it was just. To me, kind of all the same. I guess I would have liked Will Smith to be cooler, but I'm used to him being super cool, so he's probably fine. But I didn't see her as like, yeah, that character needs their own movie right now. I saw that as kind of like, they can go in another movie as a secondary character. And I thought someone like the Joker, who's a main character, would have made their own. Yeah, I just think his... People will say that the character didn't resonate with them, but I don't uh, think it was. I don't think it was Leto. No, is that his name? I don't know. I'm guessing. It's not Jared Leto. I'm looking it up. Yeah, go ahead, look it up. It's not Jer- Jared. I think that's a talk show host now. Yeah, it's it's the talk. It's the guy with. The- <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> him as Joker? <laughs> he would be a good Joker. Yeah, yeah. Joker's always got like a kind of funny looking face. All right, your your judgment is questionable. What, Continue. What, what's his what's the what's his name now? Hold on. Let's see here. Well, I'll let you look it up. We'll go to the next one. Yeah, sure. All right, so I'm gonna skip a bunch more of these Star Wars ones because we've already spent a bunch of time, and it sounds like we wouldn't know much about Star Wars. But we'll mention there's a Star Wars movie coming up. In December of 2023, so I don't even know how it got on this list. That's literally three years away. I guess they're starting it, production next year. But the lady who became famous for directing Wonder Woman, Patty Jenkins, uh, is will be directing this Star Wars movie called Rogue Squadron. That's what I was thinking about earlier. 
Right. So if you're into that, you know, then if you liked what she did in the other movies, you might like what she does there. All right. So let's skip down to. All right. So we got a bunch of them. We got Zootopia Plus is a new series that's coming out based on Zootopia. So Zootopia was that movie with the animals. I didn't actually see it, but I did see the meme with the sloth working as a government employee, DMV. It was just really slow. Just fun. There. I, I remember seeing Zootopia and enjoying it enough to get through the whole thing. and It, it maintained my attention, but I don't think I'll ever watch it again. So it was in that... Yeah. In that range of, of of quality, I enjoyed my time with it. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll see it someday. Maybe. So this is, by the way, this is all within Disney Animation. So I believe Disney Animation is a separate part of the company than Pixar. So you're going to be hearing stuff that's Disney Animation. So that was Utopia Plus. We have Baymax, which is a series based on Big Hero Six. Okay. Again, a movie I haven't seen. Have you seen that movie? No. I think it's a kid's movie anyway. Um, there's a musical comedy series for Moana. There is one or two other ones here that I don't even recognize. So maybe they're out of our generation. Oh, here's one. There is Lightyear. Oh, we're in the Pixar section now. Lightyear. So uh -oh. Lightyear is the origin story for Buzz Lightyear, who will be voiced by Chris Evans. So they're bringing back, I guess, Toy Story in a different, a different way. What do you think about that? What's your take on Toy Story? I think uh, I'm not excited about that. <laughs> and I, I really like the story. Toy Story, the original Toy Story, there's like a, a dozen movies or so that I feel confident that if, if you were to put the movie on mute and no subtitles, I could verbatim recite like 80 percent you've of the seen time. it that much well no it's not that i've seen it the quantity of times to be able to recall it so much is it, there was a period of my life i think between the ages of, of like 12 to like 17 that whatever i watched in that time just stuck with me and that's one of those movies where oh, wow. i just remember almost everything and I think it's a fantastic franchise, but the problem with it is it's a money maker, and they just want to keep doing it again and again, yeah, and again and again. Like I thought, the end of Toy Story three uh, was tremendous. What, what happened at the end? Remind me what happened at the end. They um, it was Andy giving uh, his toys because he's going off to college to another person. Oh. Um, and, you know, you could interpret that many different ways. Like, he's growing up, a coming-of-age story. Right, right. Um, but it's also, like, the end of a chapter, the end of the story with Andy and his toys. That's the end. One, two, and three. Right. Uh, but because it's such a beloved franchise, they couldn't leave well couldn't enough alone. And, you know, and even Toy Story 4 I thought was fun. But, I'll uh, be honest, I didn't even know there was a three. And now you just told me there's a four. So three. I can see where you're coming from right now. Yeah. It's 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 fatigue. It yeah. really is fatigue. Uh so yeah, I'm not excited about the the Buzz Lightyear movie. And by the way, it's Lightyear, which I didn't even know this whole time I thought it was Lightyear. Like I thought he said uh, Buzz Lightyear. But it's actually Buzz Lightyear. Found out now. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there's, <laughs> there's a few other ones in here. There is, um, let's see, a car series that will follow Lightning McQueen and Mater. Cars is another one that I haven't watched, but I do know the characters. And I know Lightning McQueen is the, the main red car. I think Mater is a funny one. There is, uh, assuming you haven't seen some of these, um, so I'm going to skip some of them here. There's a few weird ones. If you want, we could touch on those. There's a Pixar movie called Turning Red. 
So it's about a 13-year-old girl going through puberty that transforms into a giant red panda when she gets excited. Literally yeah. transforms into a red panda? It's funny you say that because they even put in parentheses, yes, really. <laughs> in the stuff I'm reading right now. And this is a Pixar movie? Pixar movie, yeah. See, of all the things we talked about, I think we started with Vision and That's Scarlet right. Witch. Yeah, yeah. From there up until now, we've talked about a lot of things. We have. And that is what excites me most because it sounds so ridiculous. And for a studio like Pixar to run with that script, to run with that idea, there's got to be something there. There's got to be something there. So, and it intrigues me because how do you, how are you going to make that work? So uh, I think they're going to make it cute. Like like when uh, when Kung Fu Panda came out, I remember a friend told me you should watch Kung Fu Panda, and I looked at it and I said, no, not watching that. And then I eventually watched it. Whenever I watched it, and I was like, it did a pretty good job with that movie. Like making. A Kung Fu Panda, the center of a story? Didn't expect that. I have not seen Kung Fu Panda. I'll check it out. Well, if your expectations are on the floor, it definitely will beat them. So that's good. Yeah, they're hovering ankle high. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Somebody says Kung Fu Panda, you're kind of like, eh, I don't know how good this could be. Isn't Jack Black in that movie? Well, it's an animated movie, so I'm not sure who the voices are. I feel like Jack Black's in that movie. Also, before, we were confusing Jared Leto, which oh, is... The, Jared Jer Leto. Jared Leto, the Joker, who is... That is the right person. We were confusing it with Jay Leno. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so we were right with the name. We were right. We were just mixing up our phonics. That's, That's crazy. We so I feel correct and also incorrect at the same time. Validated. Just wanted to put that to rest. Moving on. Moving on. So I will tell you that the reason I even stumbled upon this list was because I got the news that, that Disney bought a bunch of different franchises recently. And Oh, yeah? Which ones? Well, ones that I care about. And one of those was the Aliens franchise, which most people don't care about. But the guy who made the TV show Fargo, he also made the TV show Legion, both of which I quite enjoy, uh, was given the rights to make a TV series for Aliens. And I was excited because that director, um, if you've, I don't, I'm pretty sure you haven't seen Legion. No. It's, not, it's, it's, it's kind of a niche kind of a thing, but um, he tells it with... There's a, real, there's a real film term for this. I want to I think here. I think it's called uh, like an unreliable narrator. Is that, a, is that a real term? Like the person telling the story cannot be trusted. So what you're seeing, you don't, it is not actually what's happening. That's fun. So the cool like thing, that. yeah, it's really cool because Legion's based on this superhero who has like reality altering powers, but you don't know what you're seeing. Is that real life or is that what's in his head? And then there's a third layer, which was like, he can also make that real life. So I always found it cool that this director found a way to like make that interesting. Usually it would just be like confusing and told usually backwards in movies. They would tell the story backwards in pieces and I wouldn't figure it out. So they bought that. They bought um, a National Geographic spot with Will Smith and Chris Hemsworth. They're going to be um, doing some sort of a summary type of a video like you know those videos that like Oprah narrates and all those other ones where it's like, this is Earth. This is life. <laughs> you know, one of those. Those are hit or miss for me. As soon as they start hitting like this contrived, over the top, dramatic, philosophical vibe, I right. check out. But if it feels genuine, if it feels real and there's a little bit of grit to it, I can, I can dig into those pretty deep. Yeah, they said that there's going to be two series. Will Smith is going to do one that embarks on an awe-inspiring journey to unlock the series, the secrets of this planet's most extraordinary unexplained phenomena. Could be hit or miss. And uh, Chris Hemsworth is doing, explores the limits of the human body. Again, could be hit or miss. Now, I don't need to know how far a body can bend, but I am always very impressed when someone does something like superhuman. I'm always just like, wow. 
Yeah. Kind of like when you see parkour for the first time, first time you've ever seen it, you're like, oh my goodness. People jumping off buildings whenever they want? Crazy. All right, so there's still a few more here. Um, Ice Age? Are you familiar with Ice Age? Wow, they're making more Ice Age? Ching! How many Ice... Is this number three? I have no idea. Well, I know Ice Age had spinoffs, like the squirrel had its own movies, too. Just a little... Oh, was it a chipmunk or a squirrel? And this is called Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild. Starring Simon Pegg as the voice of Buck. Uh -huh. We're getting okay. near. What's that? It, it, Just speechless. Yeah. I guess it's happening. Yeah, okay. We're, we're getting near the end here. There's still a few other ones here. Um, wow, Star Wars has a whole list here. I'll tell you something. They bought Star Wars and said, We got to get all the milk out of this cow. There is. I'm going to just count them real fast. Not in counting the movies. I'm just going to count the series. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight series coming on Disney Plus for Star Wars. We have an animated series called Star Wars Visions. We have Star Wars Lando. Where Lando will be the main character. Star Wars A Droid Story, which the heroes will be R2-D2 and C-3PO. We covered Obi-Wan Kenobi. We have The Acolyte, which is a Star Wars series set in the High Republic era of the franchise. We have the Rogue One spinoff I mentioned. We have Star Wars The Bad Batch, another animated series about a bad batch of clones from the Clone Wars. And then the other spinoffs, the Ahsoka one. Crazy. No comments. That's, that's a lot of volume. That's a lot of Star so Wars. That's a lot of stuff. And for the movies, they're cashing in on the Marvel here. They have Black Panther 2, Ant-Man 3, Doctor Strange 2, Fantastic Four, which I'm guessing is a new reboot, so the third reboot. Guardian Galaxies 3, Guardian Galaxies Holiday Special, Moon Knight, She-Hulk, Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel 2. There's... An, an, uh, a War Machine series coming up. There's a lot of... They are just cranking it out now. Yeah, that's a lot. So we're getting, we're getting near the full, full list here. So I was wondering, what's your, what's your take on this, this new Disney Plus? So Disney Plus came out a year or so ago, I don't know, one or two years ago. And they, they originally had the Netflix model, which was like, let's take existing shows and let's throw it on a service and people will buy it. And now they're kind of thinking, now I'm going to transform and make my own series and I'm going to throw them up and it's going to be unique. So how do you think they're doing and what do you think about it? I think this is going to be Well, I think all of this is in their best interest uh, because I thought of all the subscriptions and all of the services out there, Hulu, HBO, and Netflix and all of them, I thought Disney was the slimmest. I thought per dollar it was the worst value yeah uh when you when you look at what's available what you're getting for every dollar you spend as a quick I note thought... they will be raising their prices okay <laughs> uh but i think they're behind the curve because when netflix first came out it was you get your dvds in the mail you send them back when you want no late fees and that was groundbreaking and then as time went on it was like oh we also stream now and then that became the norm. And then what happened next? We're creating original content. But this, Jim, this was like five, six, seven years ago at this point. And Disney's just picking up steam, producing masses amount of content to try to keep up. And for someone like myself, uh, who couldn't, could barely get excited about Toy Story 4, uh, a yeah, beloved true. franchise to me, hearing war machine and all these other things uh i just feel like it's saturated and it's redundant uh i like things uh that are a little bit more homegrown a little bit more heartfelt and the the thing that's most exciting to me is that 
panda story because it seems so ridiculous. It seems authentic. Yeah. And, and no, it, it feels like this has to fail <laughs> because it's so obscure and ridiculous that I'm intrigued by it. Right, right. Yeah, I think I agree with you on pretty much all those points. I think it is uh, not a great deal. I actually don't have it. Mainly because they didn't have anything new, like you just mentioned. And they're making new content now, so I guess when they make the new content, I'll buy it. But right now, it's not new. And I think you're also right. I think there's definitely a fine line between uh, nostalgia and continuing to create content in a, in a, in a genre and a lore that's valuable. And then there's like overproduction on what you own and not starting something new. I think they're too far in that one direction that I'm kind of talking about. Like, they don't have to do seven or eight Marvel movies. You know, I forget how many Star Wars, just TV shows they're making. You know, I think it's great to keep that up, make one or two, you know, and then take the extra time and make new series that can spin off their own, you know, genres and their own you know, fan bases. Yeah, and I don't, you know, financially speaking, I don't think what they're doing is a mistake. Because oh, sure. Because, and I'm ignorant to all of this, but from my understanding, my ignorant understanding is that the Avengers movies made bank. Yeah, they make a lot of money. <laughs> and, you know, why not? If you're a business and that's what you do, why not continue doing that? But when I, when I hear these lists and I hear these names and I hear there's, there's very few movies or, or Shows. series that you mentioned that didn't have a number after them oh yeah they're all singles <laughs> Most of them, yeah so to me it's it's uh it's just it's i can't I'm, i guess i'm not their target demographic right and that's okay but i think i think to your point they should have something for everybody in the next year and so the fact that they're missing a lot of new original content and when i say new we're talking like novel we're not talking like existing series adding a new chapter talking new new series uh you know i think they're lacking that we kind of saw it i mean there was a few here and there that we touched on that i mean i guess we never heard of that you know could be something but most of them you're right they were like existing characters built up and actually if we parallel this to disney i think that's kind of why it's tough to stay grounded in disney in general because there's only so much you can do with the existing characters. Like you can't keep making, you know, Snow White sequels and whatever sequels. You have to create new princesses. That's essentially what you have to do. And that's kind of what I'm asking them to do for these series is create a new series with some new characters with a different twist. You can have the same happy ending, but, you know, it's a different story. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I feel the same way. Yeah. All right, so uh, I think we could end it here. Um, if anybody watching this felt that uh, you had difference of opinions or agreed with us, leave it in the comments below, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.